I'm standing on top of this lovely hill looking out over the Strath Creek Valley behind me. I do love it here, but it's freezing, absolutely freezing. Today we're going to talk about what I reckon are the three best lenses for landscape photography. Now this video has been done a million times, I know I've done it as well, uh, but this is a really short one, which is good. I reckon you can get away with two lenses for landscape photography, but if you really want to push and you're a bit of a lens addict like me, then three is more than enough. And essentially what you're really looking for is you're looking for an ultra wide lens, a standard lens, and a telephoto zoom. Now let me explain what I mean by ultra wide. Ultra wide is, I guess in most makes, is going to be something like a 16 to 35, a 14 to 35, um, if you can get it, an 11 to 24. Uh, Canon has that in their EF system. Uh, not a cheap lens, and I'm hoping that they make something similar to that in the RF lineup for the R5 and R6 and so on and so on. Um, but that's basically what I'm talking about, is something that's around the 11 to 16 mil range is ultra wide. And that allows you to get really cool, uh, very either very wide vistas, or to be able to get very, very close to your subject in the foreground and create this sense that the person who's viewing the image is standing right in that spot. And they've got, you know, tremendous depth of field. They get lots of stuff in focus. Um, they tend to be very sharp in the center. Some aren't so sharp on the edges. It tends to come down to how much money you're prepared to spend on one of these lenses. The more you spend, the sharper they tend to be in the corners. Um, vignetting can also be a bit of an issue where you get sort of darkness around the corners, but usually lens correction tools in post-processing software like Lightroom and Photoshop can fix that up for you with a lens profile. It's just a couple of clicks and bang, it gets rid of the problem. Um, I don't tend to shoot ultra wide very often. I have, let me grab it. I have Canon's 14 to 35. You can see that here, put it in front of the camera so it can focuses. Yeah, so I have one of these and it's a really lovely lens. Um, I didn't go for the 15 to 35 because I didn't see the point in spending all that money just to get an extra stop of speed. Since I shoot landscapes, I don't need an f2.8, f4 is fine. Uh, that means this lens is lighter, cheaper, easy to fit in my bag, uh, easy to carry around, and I save a ton of money. So um, that's what I use as my ultra wide, is this 14 to 35. Before when I had, um, when I didn't have the RF system, uh, Canon RF system, I had the 16 to 35. So that's ultra wide. The next one I think you need is a standard lens. And I know this kind of probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to people who shoot landscapes. They figure that you're either at the wide end or the long end. But I tell you, and I've said this before many times, there is something very special and unique about shooting landscapes with a lens that mimics the perspective that we see with our own eyes. Now that could be a 35 mil, could be a 50 mil. I tend to move more towards the 50 side of things uh, in this situation because if you're going to get a 14 to 35, well, you've already got the 35 mil focal length there. Trouble is, even if you get the 2.8 model, you don't have that really shallow depth of field that something like a nifty 50 is going to give you. You can buy a 50 mil lens uh, very cheaply that goes down to f1.8. Um, once you get to f1.2, they get horrendously expensive, but seriously, a nifty 50 that goes down to f1.8, f2 is going to give you that be beautiful shallow depth of field, which will allow you to uh, get up nice and close to certain subjects and blur out your background or blur out your foreground and have something nice and sharp in your midground. And that, that can be really, really nice. Um, and if you want to get, you know, a wider shot, well, then you can just simply do a pano. You can, you know, stitch together multiple images, take, you know, an image here, one here, one here, and one here. And then in Photoshop or Lightroom, you can stitch them together and you get this really unique perspective of, you get the lifelike um, perspective of a 50 mil lens, but you get the width and breadth of a much wider lens. So that's something worth trying. So ultra wide, something like 14, 15, 16 mil for those really unique, immersive, up close and personal um, landscape shots of say a rock in the foreground or a bit of a fallen tree or you know, um, some foliage or something like that, or the grand vistas where you want to get lots in. They're really good for that. Uh, standard um, style lens that's nice and fast so that you can get that natural human eye perspective on things, but also get the benefit of that really lovely shallow depth of field. And the third one is a telephoto zoom. Now I've got two of those. Oh, and incidentally, while we're at it, this is uh, the Nifty 50. They cost bugger all, focus you bastard. They cost bugger all, but they tend to be extremely sharp. And like I said, F1.8, you get that really nice shallow depth of field. Let's put that on the ground. So 
The third lens is a telephoto zoom. Now I have this permanently attached to my camera. This is the um, Canon 70 to 200 f4. Is that in focus? Yes, it looks like it's in focus. I have the 70 to 200 f4 because it's relatively small. It's certainly light. And when I put the lens hood back on like that, you can see that it's nice and compact. Lovely lens, very, very sharp. Uh, and like I said, in most cases, you just don't need f2.8. This is why I recommend you, getting a nice, you get a nice fast standard lens because they're cheap, they're sharp, and you get that shallow depth of field for very little money. Save your money on the wide end and on the long end and get the f4 lenses, not the f2.8s. Because the thing is also when you're shooting, well, I'll give you an example. If you're shooting ultra wide, what are your chances of needing f2.8? Chances are you want to get a ton of stuff in focus, so you're not going to use f2.8. And at the other end, if you're shooting, you know, a telephoto lens, say 70 to 400 mil, they naturally have shallow depth of field in them anyway. So even if you shoot at f4, or f5.6, f8, and you zoomed in at 200 mil or 400 mil, you're going to get very shallow depth of field anyway. So why pay that extra money to get an f2.8 lens when you're probably not going to shoot at 2.8 anyway? Now, the other telephoto lens I mentioned is this fella, my Canon 100 to 400. It's lightweight. It's quite slender, not very attractive looking. It doesn't look very serious. It doesn't look as serious as the 7200. Um, but I've had the serious version of this lens before. I had the EF. 100 to 400, lovely lens, really sharp, beautiful thing, but bloody heavy. Uh, and the 100 to 500 RF Canon lens is even heavier. Well, is it heavier? I don't know, but it's big, you know, and they cost a fortune. Whereas this bugger, this 100 to 400, you know, sure, it doesn't look particularly glamorous. It doesn't look like a serious L lens, but it's bloody sharp and you can carry it with you everywhere because it's light and it gives you this enormous range of 100 to 400 mil. So here's what you want. Definitely get yourself a fast standard lens, like a 51.8 or a 35 1.8. You'll get a beautiful human um, accurate perspective on things, and you, then you've got a nice fast lens for very shallow depth of field as well. Then with your ultra wide lens, save your money. Don't get the 2.8 lenses, get an F4 lens, something like a 14 to 35, 15 to 35, 16 to 35, or if you're on the, say for example, the Canon EF um, mount, look at the 11 to 24, although like I said, it's drug money. Then at the long end, get yourself either a 70 to 200 or a 100 to 400. Either of those really is gonna be fine. Um, the 70 to 200 is probably a safer bet because um, if you've got yourself a 35 or a 50 standard lens for you know messing around with shallow depth of field and that kind of stuff, you don't, I guess, want too much of a gap between that lens and your next lens. So um, a 70 to 200 is going to be super versatile, very sharp. Um, and if you need to, you can always crop in on your images to get you know, closer. Or you can get yourself a, an extender, a teleconverter, and give yourself that extra range. <clears throat> but seriously, if you left out the 70 to 200 and went instead for the 100 to 400, especially the Canon RF 100 to 400, seriously, you're not going to be disappointed. It's a brilliant lens. And if you don't mind the weight and you don't mind spending the money, then the best choice, at least in the Canon RF lineup, would be the RF 100 to 500. That is probably what I would buy if I didn't have the 70 to 200 or the 100 to 400. I'd just get the 100 to 500. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm freezing my tits off on top of this hill here. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. For more on this subject, just click here.